Good day. Welcome to Fairfield County Talk Radio. I'm John Marino, and we are produced by Shark Creative. We are made possible by our title sponsors, Tough Lawn Lawn Service by Fairfield County Tick Control. Also by Echo Systems Irrigation and Lighting by Gutter Brothers Home Services. Also by Santa Fuel and New England Motor Oil, along with MDM Sanitation. Good morning, Wilton Earthscapes Landscape Management and Development by Apollo X Pest Control, Dagnes Real Estate, and the Wilton Chamber of Commerce. Here at Fairfield County Talk Radio, this is What's Happening in Fairfield County. Glad to have you with us. Here on What's Happening in Fairfield County, we are joined by Tim Malloy from Quinnipiac University of Hamden. Tim Malloy, Quinnipiac Polling Institute Assistant Director and Polling Analyst. Tim, Quinnipiac conducted, first of all, by the way, Happy St. Patrick's Day. And secondly, well, thank you. Thank you. Also, too. And we're all Irish on March 17th, right? And today is March 17th. Quinnipiac spent a lot of time, spoke to a lot of people about a variety of topics that I would have to say right now come at a crossroads period for this country and the world. First of all, foreign policy and specifically NATO's refusal to institute and enforce a no-fly zone over Ukraine to maybe at least tamper down the war with the Russians. What do Americans think about that? Well, actually, they agree, John, Uh, 54% versus 32 against say we should not uh, put in the no-fly zone. And clearly what you said is in the back of their minds, this could escalate things to a far more terrifying um, level. So that's a fairly large uh, number to approve of what the government's doing right now. Mm -hmm. Is the, I guess, the sense in this country is that no matter what, avoid World War III, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's interesting. 75% another number, I don't want to throw too many numbers at you. 75% say we should do whatever we can do for Ukraine short of that. So it's not that Americans are not engaged in this. They really are and they're watching and they're worried. But I think they know that's a trigger point. What do Americans think about Russian President Vladimir Putin? And maybe what do Americans think about politicians in this country who some say have made favorable statements about the guy we know as Bad Vlad. As we said in the quote, some career advice for uh, politicians, pundits, and opinion performers, and we all know who they are, there may be enduring consequences to wrapping your arms around uh, the world's most reviled leader. The point is that Americans by a march of 57 to 30 say, if you embrace uh, Putin on any level, it, it's going to hurt your career. It may hurt your reelection chances, any other level of employment you have. So they're really against anybody saying something good about Putin, which some people have. Now, President Biden, his arrow pointing up or down? Pointing uh, nowhere, pointing pretty level, sli- slightly up. Uh, it's interesting. His overall approval is under 40 percent, but his approval of handling the situation in Ukraine is actually uh, tipped up to 42 percent yes, 49 percent no. Uh, and that has steadily been moving upward. And as you know, you're a news guy. Every day is new news or, you know, he's on his way to Europe. These things are going to move around. These are snapshots in time. It's sort of tried to say, it, but it is. I mean, some of the numbers from yesterday may not apply tomorrow. I came across an analysis yesterday that said the Biden game plan for re-election right now, or maybe at least for trying to maintain hold of Congress next year is, look, I kept us out of World War III. How helpful can just that one issue possibly be? Well, if COVID is turning around, which we believe it is, and by the way, that's way down the list of concerns for Americans right now. Um, and the president, this is a, a little bit subjective opinion here, and, and the president is able to hold us off and, and and our country does not go into a major war. You've got to uh, believe that the leadership numbers for the president will go way up. And that's really one the, the, the top thing in, in people's minds probably in this country right now. So I'm not guessing, but uh, if this is handled and we fortunately, thank God, don't go any further with this, it, it could certainly help his chances of re-election if he decides to run. Mm-hmm. Tim Malloy, Quinnipiac Polling Institute here on Fairfield County Talk Radio. Tim, out of control gas prices. How out of control are opinions about that possibly? Well, uh, two thirds of Americans believe it's a very serious problem. And about that number say they're cutting back on 
household things because gas costs too much. Now, again, this is a poll taken a week ago. Gas prices might get a little better soon. Not sure on that. But yeah, people, people, this, you know, it's one of those ones that hits home. I mean, if you're buying fewer groceries or driving your car less, that tells you you're upset about gas prices. You know, they're four or five dollars a gallon. That's a lot of households get really clipped by that. Americans from people across this country that we might be willing to pay a little bit more in order to help the effort in Ukraine against the Russians. If that's what it takes to help the Ukraine short of instituting no fly zone or putting troops on the ground. If this is one way we can help, maybe we should do this. That's a good question. I think you're seeing that clearly. I think people are willing to bite the bullet on this because they know there's a greater mission. And I don't know if you saw it a week earlier where you asked the question, would you be willing to stay and fight if you were in the shoes of the Ukrainians? It was a hypothetical. It's a bit of a stretch. Yep, we got I did see that. that. Yep. And a, a good majority of Americans said, we're going to stay right where we are. If, if we were them, we would not leave our country. We would fight. So I think this has touched a nerve globally. Um, and to the, back to your question, I don't, I don't think people overall care that much. If this is going to help uh, put Putin down or slow this thing down, they're okay with it. Were you surprised by the numbers in that survey from a week ago about whether or not Americans would stay and fight as many Ukrainians have, or might they look for another route out? I wasn't surprised, actually. And I don't know what you, I'd like to know what you think. I'm not surprised that, you know, you, you look at that video. I don't know if you saw the thing, uh, the video that uh, uh, well, Leslie so played yesterday you know. when you speak of the Congress. If you look at that video, you cannot help us but be angered and, and ready to rumble. <laughs> I'm not the bellicose war kind of guy, but you look at that and you go, yep, if that came here, what would I do? I'd stay and fight. Mm -hmm. And I see President Biden's reaction so far about the call again by President Zelensky of Ukraine to institute a no-fly zone as of this morning, as of what we're doing right now, he still has made no comment. So that tells me that maybe he is moving a little bit more in that direction. Maybe, but I find it, I found it pretty interesting. The numbers, like you said, you wanted to know what I think. I found those numbers pretty interesting about that poll, about whether or not Americans would stay and fight. And the difference by generation also, too, which maybe should not be so surprising as to whether or not younger people would be more inclined to, I guess, defend and protect their homeland as to whether or not people more our age, as we are finding in places like Ukraine, grandfathers and fathers and aunts and uncles and grandmothers, even great grandmothers, 79 years old in one instance, who showed up and said, sign me up and teach me how to use a gun. That's really interesting because, John, I was looking at that before. I didn't even know if we get into this, but I, I, the older you get, the more willing you are to fight. Whether it's a collective history, you know what the past has been or what the future could be. Uh, younger people, less so. You know, it's, it's an interesting time. But uh, yeah, the Vietnam generation is still ready to go. And then people all the way down to their 30s are, are, are ready to defend the country. I'm not saying young people aren't either, but it's a lesser number. Mm -hmm. I look at the way I thought back then when I was that age and the way I think now, and maybe you learn and see different things through the years, and that helps change the way you think about the way things should or need to be done. And this is an existential war. This is something that really we've not, you know, you and I are pretty close to the same age. I mean, I was a kid during the missile crisis, but this is right up there with that. So I think people with a memory realize that this is really something different. This is not Afghanistan or Iraq. Imagine if you said the word Vietnam to millennials today or Generation Z or Generation X. Many of them may not know what happened then, what yeah. that was about. Oh, yeah. Probably not. Probably not. Mm -hmm. And Supreme Court, there was some talk about whether or not Joe Biden did the right thing by making his Supreme Court nomination now in the middle of a war. But obviously, he's trying to score as many points, I think, politically as he can, even in this seemingly downtime. Thoughts on Supreme Court? Nominee Katanji Brown Jackson. Two to one, better than two to one uh, to approve her and confirm her, the nominee. And uh, we put that question in because we wanted to, because it's very important. And, and we couldn't just ask uh, Ukraine questions, but there's there's an accord to get that done. Um, although 24% of people did not offer opinion, that means because they're not paying attention to the Supreme Court. But yes, it is a, an affirmative for her. Mm -hmm. Tim Malloy. One of the Act Polling Institute, we thank you and happy Easter. Hope to talk to you soon. You guys do great work. Thanks, John. Thank you, Tim. Talk to you next time.